Our next discussion pertains to working with text to build a website. When you think about it, the most basic building block that is used for most websites is text, whether that's information that is telling you how to find information that you want, whether you're shopping, looking for a Netflix video, etc. Text in the form of paragraphs, headings, captions, etc. are going to help you find what you are looking for. Even if a website like YouTube is specifically geared towards videos. So formatting text uh, is important. You can type text in just like we did with the first lecture, manually type that in. But nine times out of 10, whether you're doing a project that involves research or whether you're working with a client who is giving you information to format in a website, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be copying and pasting information. For this particular demonstration, uh, I've pulled up some lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum for designers is basically dummy text that is formatted into paragraphs that can make it easier for you to obtain a layout that you're looking for. And there are many lorem ipsum generators that are out there. Uh, some of them are relatively simple. You can type in how many paragraphs you'd like or narrow it down by words. Click generate and it will format text for you. But if you have a sense of humor or want something a little less bland, they do have some funny themed lorem ipsum sites. Just by typing it in, we've got one about bacon and meat items, but we've also got other ones like uh, Samuel L. Lipsum. These are all like Samuel L. Jackson quotes, so it's it can be more entertaining. So I'm gonna click the bacon Ipsum version. Same concept, it's a generator. You tell it what you want. Uh, meat and filler, why not? I don't know what make it spicy means, but we'll click it. Give me bacon. All right, so it did produce five paragraphs of content. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I can control C on my PC, uh, command C if you're working on a Mac, I can right click copy however I get want to. And I'll just come in here and replace this. Uh, let's see, welcome to my web page about Bacon. There we go. Now we filled in our question marks. Now you could just hit control V to paste that in and it will put it in and it recognizes right off of the bat that you are dealing with paragraphs. So Dreamweaver has automatically thrown those P tags in there. But there are actually several different ways that you can go about pasting content into Dreamweaver. You'll notice that there's a section here called Paste Special, and this actually breaks it down into four separate sections. By default, it's going to recognize basic structure, so paragraphs, lists, tables, etc. But there are three additional options. You can see that with structure, again, it recognized that I've got P tags there separating each paragraph individually. Text only doesn't give us any formatting. So if I click OK here, I'll back up a couple times just to get rid of this. If I paste special and say text only, it plugs in all of that information for me, but gets rid of the formatting and basically makes it one long run on paragraph as opposed to five separate paragraphs. Depending on where your content is coming from, perhaps this is something you're looking for, but it does make breaking up the content a little bit trickier. It does, it is more time consuming for you to separate the content a little bit. Paste special, uh, and then with structure plus basic formatting, does the same as this item here the default, but it also includes basic formatting like bold and italic. Now we didn't have any bold and italic items popping up here, so not really 
a stressor for us to worry about. This last one copies not just what the first two text with structures do, but it does full formatting. So if there are styles applied, like fonts, colors, etc., it's going to apply that. Let's hit OK, see what it does. So you can see that because I copied it off of one page, this particular paste special with formatting and styles grabbed the size and the font being used by that particular website. Now I'm going to suggest for your assignments, don't use this option. I'd like to see what sort of designs that you can come up with on your own. Ideally that would in the end make you the, the stronger designer, but it is there as an option. So should you run into a situation where perhaps you have a client that said, hey, I want you to revamp this page, but I want you to keep the text styling the same, that particular paste special option can be very helpful. So I'm going to go back to that default here, click OK, plugged all my paragraphs in. Something also worth considering in regards to paste special. This works with Microsoft Word documents as well. So if you have a formatted Word document of some kind, whether that is lorem ipsum, whether that is including, I'll go ahead and just do some, some formatting here of some of these paragraphs. And I'll make this red just because bacon. You can paste word text just like you could with any other text into Dreamweaver. You could highlight a, sp a particular passage or you could uh, control or command A to select all and copy. I'll come back over here. And I'm going to just paste. Now, it recognizes the fact that I did rearrange some of the lines. It recognizes that this is a header, so it did make this content large. You can see that it's got the H1 for the largest header here present. But again, did not take in the font, didn't take in the color changes, just took in basic HTML formatting. So I'll undo as with before paste special functions the same way as it would. You just have to do paste special. I'll go ahead and have it copy the styles. And it recognizes the difference in terms of the font as well as the colors that have been altered. So same concept there slightly different source, but same idea. Now, if you need a particular character that you're looking for, like a copyright notice or a trademark notice, you'll want to come over to the insert panel under HTML, under the insert panel, at the very bottom, there's a section called character. This has a whole slew of different information. Uh, whether it's different types of currency, there's our copyright notice. So if we wanted to copyright develop a copyright, we could do so. Trademark, registered trademark, same thing. Anything that you don't see here, click on other characters. And this is going to open up a variety of different symbols that you are able to use. So whether it's a particular awkward sign, a different type of trademark, or if you're typing a name or a word that's in another language and you need any of these additional little symbols or tails that are attached to certain letters depending on the language being used, this would be how you go about accessing this. Because the book is a slightly older version, 
it's going to give you a slightly different direction on the insert panel, but just keep in mind it is considered an HTML object. So just click on HTML, it's at the end of the list. Once you pick your character in here, like we'll pretend I need a, this funny O, click OK, and it'll insert it in. I don't need this, so I'll hit delete. In the instance of needing a line break, if I were going to write an address, uh, we'll say my name, business name, If we take a minute and just pay attention to the way that this text is being addressed in the HTML, you're going to notice that every time I hit return, unlike when I'm dealing with a Word document or, or basic word processing, it's placing each of these into its own paragraph. And as a result, it's adding just this really awkward spacing between each portion of my address that I've produced here. So one way to get around that is to add a line break, essentially. You can get to this a couple different ways. Um, first, I'm just going to make my address all on one line. So I'll click where I want the line break to occur. One way that you can go about doing this is also under the insert panel, in the same spot that you would put in a character, there's line break right here. So if I click this, can see that rather than having that paragraph gap, it's putting in a BR or line break tab. But the other way you can go about doing that is you can hold down shift when you hit return, which will automatically put in a line break tab. You can also just, if you're comfortable working in the HTML directly, type in BR, close that tag and just hit return. So it treats this content, it's still in a paragraph tag, but it aligns it in a way that's just a little bit easier to deal with. Something else, if you're new to dealing with working in HTML, uh, some differences that you might notice between working in, say, a Word document versus HTML. If you wanted to add space between content in a Word document, you could hit the space bar multiple times or even hit the tab key to help increase the amount of space between your content. Conversely, if we were to come into an HTML document and I'm going to hit the space bar several times, it's not recognizing that. Same thing with the tab key. It's saying, nope, don't like that. Even if I do it here, it's not actually going to update that visually. And the reason for that is Dreamweaver recognize, it's assuming you're making some sort of mistake. It's It doesn't want a line of text with too much space between the content because not only do web browsers typically ignore multiple spaces, but they ignore spaces that maybe aren't even between words. So you're basically, you know, it's not going to work that way, unfortunately. But a browser does recognize non-breaking spaces. So you can see, you know, this guy right here, your line break it recognizes. The easiest way for you to get space between text is going to be using a cascading style sheet or CSS. We've got our CSS designer up here. I've got a chapter on styles that I will be dealing with in the future. So I will bring it up at that point. But the easiest way that you're going to be able to get that result if you're looking for an extended amount of space between content is going to be for you to use style sheets to add margin or padding around specific words to give it a little bit of breathing room on the left, right, or perhaps both sides. In addition to things that you could insert, let's say you need to insert a date for some reason. There's a date button in the insert panel. Click it, 
it'll tell you how to format it if you'd like the day of the week shown and you can also specify how you'd like that date formatted whether it's spelled out in full whether you're using the European version of the date or the way we view our dates breaks it down into several different ways and you can function in a time as well whether that's military time or how we use a.m. and p.m. and you can have it automatically update so it's going to recognize what date it is currently based on how your computer is set up or you can plug whatever date you want in if I click OK you can see it's got my date currently when it comes to selecting text relatively easy same way you do if, if you double click it's going to select a word if you triple click it will select a paragraph you can click and drag to select a certain amount of space but a couple things that are new to Dreamweaver CC 2017 is you can actually produce a multi cursor selection. So as an example to kind of convey how these multi cursor or multi line selections work, I'm going to design or add in kind of a, a faux navigation bar. Typically when you design a navigation bar and I will go into more detail once we start discussing style sheets. Uh, typically they are a list. So I've gone ahead and I've clicked the unordered list button which gives me bullets essentially. And if we come over here and take a look at our HTML, UL represents an unordered list. Again those are bullets. If this were an ordered list with numbers it would be an OL. And each item within that list, regardless of how many list items there are, LI represents a list item. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in what I essentially think I'd like my navigation bar to look like. So we might have a home page. We might have a about page, maybe. meat portfolio services products contact there we go that sounds good to me so let's let's say I'd like to select each of these lines at one time because I want to edit them independently and I maybe I don't want to highlight it this way maybe I just want to edit an aspect of each of these um, but I want to do so within the tags so if I click and highlight these it is highlighting that content but perhaps I would like to make some sort of change inside of each of these maybe I want to turn each of these into links so rather than putting the a tag around each one independently I want to save myself some time. I'm going to click at the top of the home page and I'm going to hold down shift and alt on my keyboard and just press the down cursor. Do you see how my cursor is getting longer? So now rather than editing one line at a time, I can edit each line by using that cursor. This is something exclusive to Dreamweaver. This is something they've actually added new to this edition, this version of the software to ensure that coding can be a little bit easier for folks. Conversely, if I try to kind of scoot over, you can see, all right, now I'm at the end of home, but if I were to start typing here, it's gonna put it in the middle of all of my text, and that's a problem but I need to close that A tag. I know that it's not complete, it's not linking to anything yet, but I at least need to edit that cursor to fit each item. 
So I'm going to click, click out to deselect that. To do the rest of them, I'm going to hold down control and click at the end of each of these. You can see now those cursors are at different locations. And close that A tag. Again, these aren't being recognized as links yet, but at least I've gotten a starting point for each one. So that's one way to get, or select rather, several regions. I can edit that cursor the way that it would affect content as I go along, which can be very helpful. That particular feature where you can select an entire line of content, that's only available if you're editing in HTML. If you attempt to do that over in the design section, it's not going to work but it does allow for you to make edits pertaining to how things are set up vertically or alter that across the board in the HTML when you're editing. Column selections can be done as well. So if I decide, you know what, just kidding, I want to get rid of those A tags. Instead of clicking and dragging, click, hold down the Alt key, and drag. Same concept. So now I can delete those or select. You see how it's grabbing, see, recognizing all of them. So Alt if they're in a straight line. Control or if you're on a Mac, Command to select each one individually. hit delete. So that does, again, save some time with the way that you might be selecting content. HTML tags, applying those to text, did that a little bit on day one. If I needed an item to be something other than a paragraph, you know, welcome to my web page, perhaps I want this to be a header, I can come down to format, click in heading one. I could also come up here and just replace my P with my H1, making sure that the beginning and ending tags match. These can be altered at any given time and using the drop down menu or manually inserting. Either way, it, it updates immediately on your behalf. If I wanted to make a footer and have maybe small text, heading six is the smallest it goes. And if you need to relocate content, similar to a MS Word document, you can click and drag. Not here, but you should be able to click and drag here. There we go. So if I want it at the bottom, rearrange that for me. Click and drag doesn't work in, oh, there we go. It is working now. Now you see how when I highlighted that and drug it up here, it changed my formatting. When you click and drag in design view, it leaves behind the tag that it's surrounded by, and that's problematic. So if you're going to click and drag to relocate content, you must make sure that the entire tag is getting moved as well. So you will want to make sure that you take the time to do so in the HTML or the code view section, not within design section. Otherwise, it may run into formatting errors. Some additional basic, basic HTML formatting. Bold is going to add the strong tag to either side of content that you're using. And to get italic, 
it's going to give you the M tag. M stands for emphasis, so that's essentially the equivalent of what italic represents if you think about MS Word. If I deselect each of those, it undoes it, but you can also come over here and just delete those tags as well. And remember, you must delete the beginning and ending tag, otherwise issues can occur. If you want to indent a paragraph, there are block quote buttons, which will bring it in. And you can see it puts it in a block quote and even indents it for you right here. You can block quote a paragraph several times, assuming it has enough space to condense. And to undo, you can unblock quote or remove the block quote. This essentially nests multiple block quote tags inside of one another. And as we mentioned previously about lists, unordered list gives us bullets, ordered list transfers that to numbers. The list items remain identical. The only difference is whether it's an OL or a UL. If you want to nest lists inside of each other, maybe I want to make an additional secondary list under my meat portfolio and discuss different kinds of meats. If I click, or rather if I indent, and I'll say, you know, beef, pork, pork, Poultry. I'll spell it wrong since I'll use that to change spell check in a moment. Fish other. I like other. Question mark. You can see what that does is it, is it basically puts an unordered list inside of the unordered list. So that gives you the opportunity to nest lists inside of one another. Now let's say we want to format our list. We want to do something different. I'm just going to click inside of my list. I'm going to go to edit. And towards the bottom, under list, I'm going to click on properties. And sometimes if you're in the HTML, in the code, it's not going to let you do it, but I'm going to just come click out here. And that makes it visible. So under properties, it gives you some different options here. I'm going to stick with bulleted list, but you can switch those from bullets to squares. If you're dealing with a numbered list, you can even tell it which number you'd like it to start on or whether or not you'd like it to be numbered, Roman numerals, alphabetical items, etc. Once we get into CSS, you can even change these shapes. Maybe you'd like it to be stars or tiny little pieces of bacon as a graphic for that bullet. You could go that route as well. But to change those alter, to change those items, go down to list, you'll click on properties. If you need to remove or delete list items, you can do this one of two ways. You can either remove the formatting from the items, which is basically going to change it back into regular paragraphs, or you can just delete it entirely. So as long as I, let's say, I don't want to include other, I can just hit delete, that will remove it from the list. If I want to remove that, I can click none. You can see that by doing so, that turned it into paragraphs. It recognizes the indent, so it keeps the block quote, but it turns those into P tags as opposed to list items. Now, I wouldn't mind having a drop down, so I'm going to go ahead and keep those in there. Now, I've been doing this work in Design View. If I click on Live View, it's going to give you a slightly more realistic 
appearance of how it would appear in a web page, you can see that it did space that content out a little bit differently, but for the most part it appears the same. You can see that selecting each area is a little bit different, but you can still alter it as you would and it's still going to update live in the HTML as well. Now if there are any animations, fancy graphics, GIF animations, if you recall the, uh, the dancing bacon graphic that I brought in in the last visual, and I'll go ahead and insert that again just because because dancing bacon, insert image, have to relocate that. There we go, dancing bacon. In live view, if you have any sort of graphics incorporated in design mode, it's going to look flat, but any elements that might move or alter when viewed in a browser live mode is going to give you that change as well. If you're in live view, and I'll switch over there, and I'm going to stretch this out a bit. If you're in live view and you're looking to add additional content, some of these HTML buttons will help you with that. So you'll notice that unless I double click, it doesn't give me the opportunity to alter this. Uh, clicking on the little blue icon gives me the opportunity to change formatting. So instead of coming down here to the properties panel, it gives me those options up here, as well as being able to add block quotes, strong, which isn't visible on a header, italics or emphasis. These options, these little blue boxes only really pop up in live view, but it gives you the option to alter quite a bit. You can see that not all of it is going to get this option, but I can also add in images and paragraphs this way as well. So if I click paragraph, it gives me the option based on the location of the header, how am I going to insert that paragraph? Before this block item, after it, wrap it with the paragraph or nest it inside of the paragraph. So I'm clicked on that H1 up here. So I'll say I want a paragraph after it. I'll click after. And you can see it plugs it in. This is the content layout for P tags. So it's telling, it's putting in dummy text saying, hey, here's a paragraph for you. If I decide, you know what, I want to relocate that, I'll have to do that either in design or if you recall, dragging and dropping in design doesn't work all that great. So I might want to drag it to be in another location. So there it is. I put it underneath my welcome about bacon. There it is in the HTML. I might hit return just to clean it up a touch, but the visual ends up appearing the same. Just like inserting a paragraph, you can insert headings right off the bat. Tables, list items, a lot of the items that are down here in the properties panel you can also edit up here. The paragraph heading, these don't work in design. Those are intended just to work in live mode. Lastly, in regards to text content, there is a spell check function built into Dreamweaver. Given, I would hope that you're sourcing correct material, but spelling mistakes do occur, especially if you're typing by hand. And Dreamweaver, unlike Microsoft Word, which will highlight, and you can see it doesn't recognize Latin in this instance, it's not seeing, it's, it's you know, this is underlining every area it's not sure about. 
Dreamweaver doesn't do that. I intentionally misspelled poultry. So to find or access spell check within Dreamweaver, come up to tools. There's a spell check function here. Now, given in live mode, it's not going to let me do that. I'm going to go into design. I'm going to go ahead and just click, go back to tools, spell check, and it's going to go through my whole website. And it works very similarly to spell check within MS Word. You can ignore, you can change, you it'll give you suggestions. Poultry, there's the correct spelling, so change, change. It wants to add the little accent over that. Sure, change. Now we're getting to where it's not going to recognize the Latin. When you're finished, hit close. It will keep whatever changes it made. It's worth noting that while it will catch misspelled words, MS Word's a little bit better on spell check because it does also capture uh, grammatical errors, punctuation problems, etc. If you are typing any amount of content by hand, it might be worth at least copying it into MS Word or a comparable program and having it spell check on your behalf and then take whatever that is and put that into your website just to make sure that it doesn't, you know, I do factor in spelling in terms of the professionalism of a web page. It can look great, but if I can't read it, that's a separate issue. Um, so do take that into consideration when you're working on your assignments. But it's nice to know that Dreamweaver does have a native program within it to at least do small checks. So editing text is relatively easy. If you've worked in MS Word, you can make this work out pretty well for you in Dreamweaver. There are a couple of little hiccups here and there in regards to what you're capable of doing in code view as opposed to in design or live view. But this is one of those things as you start working in it, it will become easier to accomplish.